First at four, Ford's electric gamble. We're getting a look at the future of the auto industry, which is critical to the state of Michigan. The parents of Gabby Petito have a message for her missing fiance, and they share what they're doing as they say to keep their daughter's light shining. Victor. Well, it doesn't look like much right now, but this is actually soon going to be a new $50 million cannabis facility that was founded by one of Detroit's favorite sons. Find out who in just minutes. And it doesn't get any better than this for the end of September. How long can this possibly last? Well, we'll have that timetable for you straight ahead. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. That breaking story happening right now. Detroit City Council member Andre Spivey just pleaded guilty to bribery charges. He was charged in July with one count of felony conspiracy to commit bribery. In the past hour, Spivey outlined for the judge how he and a staff member took bribes to help the towing company get city contracts. Over the years, Spivey admitted to receiving nearly $36,000. Spivey now faces up to five years in prison. We'll have more on Spivey's courtroom revelations and what's next for the councilman. Ford Motor Company goes all in with electric vehicles with a big new investment. It's part of a partnership with South Korea's SK Innovation to pump $11.4 billion into manufacturing essential parts. Now this includes the new Blue Oval City assembly plant near Memphis, Tennessee to build electric F-Series trucks. Three battery plants will also be built in Tennessee and Kentucky. The moves will create nearly 11,000 jobs along the way. Ford says the new investment will change the industry. We find ourselves at a crossroads as a company and as a country. We can wait, we can maybe hope that things change, or we could choose to lead. Thanks to all of you, we're going to create a better world for generations to come. One day, I'll bring my grandkids to Blue Oval City, just like my grandfather did when he took me to the Model T plant. Ford projects by 2030, some 40% of its company's vehicles will be electric. Pfizer has taken another step toward a COVID vaccine for younger children. The drug company and its partner, BioNTech, have submitted their research data to the Food and Drug Administration. The review of the phase three results could take several weeks to analyze. The study included more than 2,000 children between 5 and 11 years old. They were given two smaller doses than the vaccine given to older children and adults. Pfizer says the vaccine produced a robust antibody response and was well tolerated. Our Dr. McGeorge will have a closer look at what's next in the process when you join us at 5. Oh, we are on a roll in today's first forecast. Another beautiful fall day. Meteorologist Paul Gross here to tell us this evening is shaping up. Hey, Paul. Yeah, hey, Karen. I'll tell you, I know a lot of parents that have kids that do after school sports and you know how it can be in September. But and I remember coaching in some of that crummy weather in the end of September, but not this. Blue sky, it is just spectacular out there. The air is either calm or the wind is very, very light. Temps in the upper 60s to low 70s across the board. It is just spectacular outside. And you can see all the clear sky around. This right here, that's actually associated with basically the jet stream. And that all this is going to move across Lake Huron into Ontario. Maybe a few clouds skirt us uh, late at night, but nothing that's going to cause any problem, just a few. And so your evening plans are looking great. We will have temperatures kind of falling through the 60s by late evening into the upper 50s. So cooling quick this evening. So how long can this last? Well, we'll have the timetable for the rest of the week through the weekend in just a few minutes, Karen. All right. Thank you, Paul. Gabby Petito's family speaking out about their grief, the search for her fiance, Brian Laundrie, and what they're doing to honor Gabby's memory. They held a news conference just a few hours ago. Kimberly Gill joins us now with some of their comments. Kim. Karen, this is the first time Petito's family has spoken out since a memorial was held over the weekend. The family made it clear they trust the FBI to find justice for their daughter, but their attorney also spelled out who they do not trust. Listen. The laundries did not help us find Gabby. They're sure is not going to help us find Brian. For Brian, we're asking you to turn yourself in to the FBI or the nearest law enforcement agency. 
Laundre was last seen in Florida two weeks ago. He's being called a person of interest in Petito's disappearance during a cross country trip. Her body was found last week in Wyoming. Her parents and step parents announced they'll start a foundation named for Gabby to help the search for other missing people in any way possible. Her stepfather says they're feeling a variety of emotions, including anger. Here's how they cope. It's stop, you take a breath. Remember Gabby and all the great times we had with her, and all the good memories, and all the good things we want to do in her name in the future. And that's what that's what picks you up. That's what carries you through, and hopefully will keep us going from from here on out. All of Gabby's parents showed off new tattoos on their arms that they got to honor their daughter. Uh, some of the images designed by Gabby herself. Others saying, "Let it be and believe." Petito's father also called on the media and the public to do more to help find other missing people, saying it's not just Gabby that deserves the kind of support we've seen across the country. Karen, we'll keep you posted on the search for Brian Laundrie. And for now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. America's top military officers face some tough questions about the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. General Mark Milley was in the line of fire. He told the Senate Armed Services Committee it was his personal opinion the U.S should have kept at least 2,500 soldiers in Afghanistan to guard against the collapse of President Biden. Milley explained why he didn't resign after the widely criticized withdrawal. The president doesn't have to agree with that advice. He doesn't have to make those decisions uh, just because we're generals. And it would be an incredible act of political defiance for a commissioned officer to just resign because my advice is not taken. This country doesn't want generals figuring out what orders we are going to accept and do or not. That's not our job. The general also defended calls he made to China toward the end of the Trump administration. He testified he was responding to intelligence that China was reportedly worried about a potential U.S. attack. And he says those calls were fully coordinated with defense secretaries and national security agencies. It hasn't happened during the COVID crisis, but Congress is once again playing a high-stakes game of chicken. So far, neither side is blinking in the showdown over a looming shutdown. Senate Republicans have killed a bill to fund the government and raise the country's debt limit. The government runs out of money Thursday. Republican Minority Leader Senator Mitch McConnell proposed a vote on the government funding alone without increasing the debt limit. Democrats objected. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says the country will reach the current debt limit and start defaulting on its obligations by October 18th, and that could spark a financial crisis. Further action is expected later this week. Of course, we'll be watching those negotiations for you closely. NBA legend and Detroit's own Chris Webber in town today to tip off a new $50 million business over in Corktown. The new facility on 22nd Street will be a featuring a cannabis dispensary, but that's only part of the story. Victor Williams shows us how this investment could help other local businesses bloom in a growing industry. Well, some are calling this a very historic day in a very historic neighborhood with a very historic figure. This is going to be that 180 square foot facility, but founder Chris Weber says it's more than about cannabis. Tuesday, it was officially announced NBA legend Chris Weber's new $50 million cannabis facility is being developed in the Corktown community. My business is every is, is a lot of places, you know, the California is everything, and I, and I love it. This is home, and I see what's going on there, and I'm like, wait, Detroit is actually better. Players Only Holdings will be a state-of-the-art facility with a 60,000 square foot cultivation and 80,000 square foot dispensary along with the private lounge for marijuana consumption. We understand what it does, what the plant can do for the body. And so hopefully we're part of making sure that children understand that it's not for them. Be a training facility that will educate those who want to go into the cannabis field free of charge. Cookies University, what we have there is an intensive three-month program um, where you can learn from seed to sell. Lavetta Willis is the co-founder for the facility. She insists it's going to be a major game changer for not only the community, but the entire region. You know, I'm from Wayne as well. My parents still live here. So bringing jobs back, so we're just happy to be here. The Black-owned business will provide over 100 jobs to the area, something that Clinique Chapel, who lives right down the street, 
is more than excited about. That's pretty exciting that he's doing something out here. It really is. And at the end of the day, Mr. Weber says he chose this area because he wants to help level the playing field for those who are disproportionately affected by the war on drugs. Let's be honest. I mean, it was a Schedule C drug. It was something that um, had such a terrible narrative to it. And you can expect phase one of this facility to be complete and open this upcoming March. Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, thank you, Victor. And we'll keep an eye on this project and we'll let you know when we have any updates on hiring at the facility. Still ahead, here first at four, new tensions in one of the world's hotspots. We'll talk about the impact of a new missile launch and a possible motive. Also, Canadian miners trapped underground, but these workers were well prepared for a very tricky situation, how they survived and how they're getting to safety. Later, the impact of climate change on anyone under the age of 40. And some of the disasters a baby born in 2021 could face. New productions ahead, first four.